Does it sound working? Sweet, cool. My name is Multiplier and I've got another tutorial for you. It's been a while, but here it is. So, bouncing to audio. Now, normally I talk a lot and a lot of people say, just do it. So, I'm going to just do it and then talk about why you want to do it afterwards. So, bouncing to audio. We've got a VST instrument massive here um, and just a very, very basic thing to illustrate what's going on. So it sounds like this. Cool. It's pretty basic. It's just a, literally took 30 seconds to make and it's to illustrate bouncing to audio. So we've got, say, eight bars of this in the arrangement view. Um, how do you bounce it to audio? Um, pretty simple actually. Right click and freeze track. And then right click, flatten. Boom, done, easy, checkmate, just done it, simple as that. Now, simple thing, but that's how you do it. It's not obvious um, when you open up Ableton, so there it is, that's how it works. So, all this other talking shit, right. Um, what's the point in bouncing to audio? Well, basically, if you have um, some plugins like Massive, and normally it gets used a lot for like, the dubstep guys I know especially do it a lot with their bass sounds. They'll, they'll make a bass sound massive, but then they'll want to do some other processing to it, or they want to chop it up. And if you've got like one four bar long note, you can't chop it up very easily. Well, you just can't chop it up. So um, basically, you want to bounce it to audio, and then you've basically got the audio file. They're not creating it every time you press play because with the VST MIDI instrument thing every time you play um, unless you've frozen the track you're making the computer work out the sound every time um, so if you flatten it which is like bouncing its audio you basically got the file and it doesn't have to work it out so it cuts down on CPU and it makes further processing and chopping up real easy also if you've got um, bit of a temperamental plug-in like Massive. I know that I've had problems with Massive. Um, some other people do. It's partly in the way you use it. But, um, if you've got, if you spent ages making a really cool sound and you're slightly paranoid, you're going to lose the sound. You know, just bounce it out to audio and you've got it and it's not going anywhere. It's going to sound the same every single time. And, um, yeah, like, that's it. I was recently talking about it in an interview how he's a huge fan of bouncing to audio and then that kind of reminded me that, oh yeah, I should be doing that a lot more than I am. So I've kind of changed my workflow around doing that. And um, one of the things that I found, which I wasn't expecting, is it makes me work quicker. Because if you have it in MIDI, in the back of your head, you might be thinking, oh, I don't want to bounce it out because I might want to change the melody later, or I might want to tweak that reverb setting later, or whatever. You're kind of afraid of committing to it. But if you just bounce it to audio, you're committed to it, and that's it. And then chances are you probably got it right the first time anyway. You won't come back to it, so you just commit, bounce it to audio, and be good. Um, so yeah, that's another, another quick tip would be if you're going to bounce sounds out of like VST instruments or even just a built-in um, like MIDI instrument, um, make sure ideally you do a driver every now and then. Use like the reverb effect in the instrument because you can always add reverb on quite simply later. Kind of common sense, but it's easy to forget. Um, so yeah, that's bouncing into audio. Um, super quick, super simple, and yeah. Right, next tutorial. Is, oh yeah, check me out on um, my Facebook, uh, SoundCloud, um, Twitter. Yeah, just all sorts of internet stuff. Um, you get free stuff. Free stuff's always good. Sweet. Uh, end of the video.